Big story today is the big story from yesterday in the last several days, which is Scott Hall. It was announced at about uh, 8 Eastern that he had, in fact, passed away. Ra had a graphic to open up the show. They had a video package that they had done by the end of the show. There were references to him throughout the show, including by Kevin Owens and others. And uh, Dam- Damien Priest. Damien Priest, obviously. So, yeah. yeah. Very sad story. Lots of outpouring of support from all sorts of people in in wrestling over the last several hours, and just a very sad story. Yeah, um, it was interesting. Um, you know, with, with Damian Priest and everything, because he was. I saw. I read his thing of um, meeting Scott Hall, and I think that that's when I'm pretty sure that's when we were there. Um, when Scott, if, if you remember, um, it would have been it all out in Chicago. This was Starcast. Where, at Starcast, right? Well, just yeah. in the hotel, in the hotel lobby after, um, you know, it was pretty late at night, and Scott Hall was around with. Um, I remember he was talking to Joey Janela and uh, Penelope Ford, and um, I remember we were talking to Damian Priest, and Scott Hall was talking to Damian Priest, and um, and he was recounting, and I'm pretty sure that was the conversation, you know, where um, you know, Scott Hall was giving him different advice, and I think Damian Priest kind of grew up as a big, big fan of Scott Hall's, so I thought that was kind of interesting. But um, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot to say about Scott Hall, um, you know, both positive and negative. Um, you know, it's a very, um, you know, I mean, he had uh, had demons. He could be a Obviously, he was a very intelligent guy when it came to wrestling. Not necessarily um, always made the right decisions for himself, unfortunately. Um, you know, some of it was probably whatever whatever it was. Um, I mean, he had, you know, addiction problems are a killer. And, um, you know, he tried. I, 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 at, at times, I think he tried to get straight. Because, um, you know, he was, he was on death's door when DDP brought him in that one time. I mean, I... I and and I, you know every I, everyone thought I mean he was he was almost a goner and DDP tried to clean him up and and to a degree did you know he would relapse and everything um, and I'm sure that that didn't help matters with with Scott but um, you know he definitely had um, a lot of charisma uh, as a performer um, you know especially once he got to be Razor Ramon you know. Honestly, it was what's funny because he had, you know, they they say that like you're born with charisma and it can't be taught. But Scott Hall, the original Scott Hall that I saw, you know, in the AWA was a very impressive guy. And I thought he had very limited charisma. Um, but when he was Razor Ramon, he had he had great charisma. And when he was Scott Hall in WCW, he had even more charisma. So it is something that you can kind of pick up in time, you know, so that he's kind of an interesting character when it came to that. Um, you know, I mean, he was a guy who, or, you know, again, we talked about this. Uh, well, I should also say that there's, there's in-ring charisma and then there's your, your real life charisma. And sometimes it's not so much that you, you become charismatic, more, more that you, you figure out a way to let your actual charisma come out. Maybe. I mean, I... I just remember him when he started. I mean, Brad Armstrong is a perfect example. I mean, you know, well, that's, that's, all anyone that's, ever that's, said was was what a charismatic, or, funny or Dean, guy or, or, he was. Or, or, or Dean Dean Malenko, and, but who, he was who, yeah never never able to figure out how to show that inside the ring. Right, right. Because yeah, Dean Malenko was a guy that everybody talks about like that. And Dean Malenko, honestly, you know, was a very uncharismatic pro wrestler. He was a fantastic pro wrestler, but he was not charismatic at all in the ring. Um, so yeah, I I mean, but. I mean, I was around Scott, you know, I didn't know him well at all, but I was around him in Japan in 97, I think. Um, And I I wouldn't say, you know, it it wasn't like a guy who I would say was was loaded with charisma, but he was a very nice guy at the time and pretty pretty straight. You know, even though they said that, like, he was messed up before um, wrestling and everything. I mean, I remember him on that tour and he was never really messed up, but he was not messed up at all on that tour. Um, and he went to Japan a lot and did not have a big drug reputation there or anything like that. Um, but he was, you know, it was like a guy who, you know, they they would want to push based on his look. 
And they did to a degree, but he, they didn't go all the way with him because he wasn't ready to be, you know, to go all the way. He didn't have that. Um, in WWF, um, I mean, it was interesting in WWF. I mean, it's, it's in, in the sense that I know that there were a lot of people who thought in WWF that he actually should have gotten even more of a push than he got, even though, like, he came in as a guy, when he came in as Razor Ramon, he was a guy who'd been in the business for years, had pushes that in different places that really didn't pan out, and then they gave him a real big, real, real big push, and this one did pan out. Um, then he, of course, left for WCW and, um, you know, that angle and everything like that. It was, uh, you know, huge, huge success for a couple of years there. Um, and by the time, you know, a couple of years later, I mean, he was, he just had all kinds of problems at that point. Um, but it was a sad day. I feel really bad for his friends and his family. Um, and, uh, a lot of people in wrestling and everything like that. And, uh, you know, he had his, he definitely had his, uh, demons. Um, you know, obviously people talk about the, the latter match with Shawn Michaels is probably his most famous singles match, but his, his big run, without a doubt, was the NWO run. I mean, that was a big, that was a game changer. You know, him and Hogan and uh, Scott Hall, Sean Waltman and everyone, the original NWO. Um, you know, that angle was, you know, the angle was brilliant at, at the start. Um, but it was also, as you well know, um, I mean, people will look at the, the, the high point of that and go like, you know, it was really, really great. And, and it was. But to me, like wrestling is so much about, it's about um the long term you know it's i mean you know you you get like a, a really hot thing but in the long term i mean it was you know the company went out of business you know so it's like um and some of that was i mean there's a lot of reasons that that company went out of business and 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 some of it was just the fact that they did that angle and doing that angle the way they did the angle i mean they pretty much you know, they, they turned the company into the uncool company, except for the few cool guys. Like, they, they really, like, if you were a babyface in WCW during that period, I mean, they just devastated you. You know, Sting being the exception in DDP to a degree. But for the most part, they devastated most of their babyfaces. Um, you know, the, the thing of like, um, you know, who came here to see WCW and everybody booze, and it's like, well, you know, long term, this is, I mean, I, I remember watching going like, you know, long term, this is not a good thing. And it was not a good thing because they taught you that WCW was really uncool. And um, in the long run, you know, I mean, WCW was the company in the promotional war, you know, not the NWO. I mean, if they perhaps if they had changed the name of the whole company, but then the NWO also ran its course um, and then they were left with nothing. And uh, they went down really, really fast. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty much when he had the three heart attacks and he had heart issues in the past, um, you know, and health problems and everything like that, a lot of them. Um, you know, I guess probably when he had the hip surgery, probably should have been even more concerned, you know, when I heard he broke his hip a couple of days ago. Because um, I just thought, well, you know, it's it sucks a broken hip you know but um you don't think of somebody dying in from hip surgery but he did have a you know he did have heart issues going back you know probably 10 years and um you know three three heart attacks and everything um i know his friends got to say goodbye to him today um you know what, what they took him off life support um i believe it was about uh noon eastern time and it was you know barring a miracle it was just a question of how long before you know he his his heart stopped beating essentially and i guess it was about 8 p.m when that happened and um yeah i don't have a lot of personal stories with him other than i remember and he was he was pretty cool in japan and you know met him some at other times he wasn't particularly fond of me um you know but uh um, you know, you know, he's very, very memorable, obviously, you know, very memorable character. And, um, you know, the Razor Ramon walk, you know, was, uh, and a lot of his catchphrases, you know, he's really good at that. And, um, you know, 
very, you know, a lot of guys went to him for advice. And when he was, he was sharp. He was a sharp guy uh, and a big fan from childhood. And uh, probably, I mean, not even probably, I mean, you know, and he, he, you know, he was his own worst enemy and he could have been as big a star as he was. He could have been, I'm not going to say a bigger star than he was at his peak, but he would have had far more longevity um because he had something that you know you know he became a liability and when he became a liability because he was scott hall and because he that's the one thing in wrestling and and we, we see it with a lot of guys is that if you really have a certain amount of success if you pass a certain point when it comes to success um you will get chance after chance after chance over and over and over again and um he was one of those guys where you know, no matter what, he was always going to get another chance until physically he just got, you know, too old and beat up to where he he really couldn't, um, you know, perform in the ring at that at that level anymore. His body was, you know, was beaten up. But, um, you know, um, I, again, send my sympathies to and I have to, to some of his friends and everything like that. And uh, I it's still a, it was a very it's very sad day last two days knowing that this was the probable outcome really barring a miracle this was the probable outcome and um it happened i don't know do you have any more thoughts about that i could talk about him for you know a lot really. well i mean i talked a lot about it on observer live today but i mean the other thing that we didn't really mention here is like being a fan and everything like that was how how uh, you know, you mentioned that he gave advice to people and that sort of thing, but he was a very giving guy in the ring. Like he would put anybody over; didn't care. He didn't have that that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, gotta, I, gotta, I have to say that. You know, you know. What I mean, I mean, he 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 was not a guy who wouldn't do jobs. Okay? No, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, like like when it came to like Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, Scott was always the one who would do the jobs um, and all that. And you know, with, with Hogan as well. You know, Scott would Scott would do it. And now, now when they first started the NWO, they, nobody did it. And um, but at the end, but Scott was also a master of what I call the fake job, you know, um, in the sense that like he, the one he did to, to Hector Garza or Chris Jericho, you know, where it's like he loses to them, but it's he doesn't you know, it's like it's like he makes a mockery of them before losing to them. And, and I would watch that and go like, Oh, all these people think he's so unselfish. And it's like, actually that's, that's not unselfish. Now the one he did to Sean Waltman was completely different because with Sean Waltman, it was played up so big and of course made Sean Waltman's career. And um, they're, you know, they were best friends for life off of that one. So he could do that. Um, he knew how to, he knew how to lose to put somebody over. He also knew how to lose to not put somebody over. And he was very, whichever one he wanted to do, he was very good at it. Um, but yeah, like I would, like I saw some people go like, oh, you know, he he would do these jobs for guys. But it's like, I watched those. Nobody got over it. Like, I mean, he, it, 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 you know, I mean, not the Sean Waltman one, obviously. The Sean Waltman one was a guy he wanted to put over. They had a program. They knew where they were going, and they, you know, he wanted to make Sean Waltman into somebody, and 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 that was, um, I mean, that was a, a great, great moment on Raw for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as compared to other guys in the right situation, would he do a job? Of course, and 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 the right way, and everything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I just remember him, and you know, well, he was very it, confident it, that he would be able to get himself over. Whether he won or whether he lost, it was it was never. But, but he didn't. But he didn't like to lose. the The big thing with those guys was that um, at house shows they thought it didn't matter, and you could lose at house shows, but not on television. That was usually the ro the, the rule that they had. Um, but no, he was a guy. Look, look you, have, you have that kind of charisma. I mean, you know, you can you can lose all the time, quite frankly, and um, and still maintain a top spot and. Um, you know, he, he did know that, but, um, I mean, it was interesting too, because I remember, you know, one thing they, they I remember with, um, he was with Larry Zbysko once on one of some, some tape I saw and they were watching Bruno 
um, a Bruno, in, interview with Bruno, and Bruno's talking about like not doing jobs and things like that. Not in those words, but it's like, you know, I wouldn't let anyone beat me. Because, you know, Bruno's gimmick was that nobody beat him. And I remember Scott going like, Bruno, you know, blah, blah, you know, to Zabisco, he wouldn't do business. And Larry's trying to explain it, and I'm watching, trying to go like, you don't. Now, that was one where he didn't get it because it was just different time and place. But I just remember, like, it's like you got to understand what Bruno was. It wasn't that Bruno wouldn't put anybody over, although he didn't put anyone over. It was because, you know, no, you know, once he became a big star, nobody asked other than, you know, maybe once or twice when he was out of his territory. And, and but he wasn't going to give up that reputation. You know what I mean? Like beating Bruno was something that happened you know, a few times in your lifetime. I mean, but that's because that was Bruno, you know, and everything. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, he grew up watching Dusty and everything like that in, in Orlando, Florida, and started out of the, you know, was trained out of the Florida office, sent to the Carolinas, and, uh, you know, Vern, you know, as we talked about yesterday, Vern really wanted to, you know, Vern really wanted to build around him. And I remember when, when, uh, when Scott first went to Vern and there were people, I mean, they were, there was a lot of people in the business who really were high on his potential because of his size. Hogan had hit it big. And I remember like, you know, smart guys, you know, would go to me and just go, he's better looking than Hogan. He's got a better body than Hogan. He's just as tall as Hogan. Um, you know, he's going to be bigger than Hogan. And, um, that Scott Hall was, you know, and, and, and I mean, he never was bigger than Hogan, but, um, but that Scott Hall, you know, there's, there's something, you know, it's like, it's, it's not about how good looking you are. It's about how much charisma you have. And that Scott Hall in the AWA was not ready for the push that he got. Um, you know, obviously later, you know, he, he, he absolutely was. I mean, like he really proved it with, you know, Razor Ramon. That was a, a very successful character and uh wcw they were like the murderers row there you know that uh nwo um the thing skyrocketed under them and then uh collapsed as they collapsed basically we'll be talking about scott hall i'm sure a lot more in the next couple of days new observer i'm sure is gonna have a lot on him as well and uh a lot of different stories and as noted a lot of uh a lot of uh, there were there were uh, I don't know if an ins I don't know if Kevin Owens saying hey yo would necessarily be an inside comment but I mean they had the video package and everything like that and then I give him a lot of credit for getting you know. those video packages up that quickly I mean the graphic not so much because they knew all day it was you know what I mean it's not like it was a sudden thing I mean people knew really from from Sunday morning but to get that on the show um and and everything i thought that that was uh, i thought they did a very good job um you know considering the the time of the death because it's kind of weird because it's like and they probably were working on it earlier but it's it's kind of like one of those things like to me it's like i just i i mean i i would not write a word until he was you, know, you wouldn't but a lot of i mean news outlets do that they they write the story lo sometimes long before a person passes away and it slowly is updated and then yeah. you know when when they hear that something happens they put in a uh, brief thing at the beginning what happened and uh, the rest is ready to go yeah i remember with kowalski when killer kowalski died it was like two week period you know where, where you knew it was going to happen and i could not write a word because it was just like i'm not going to write a word until it happens and then you know um but uh yeah yeah those there'll, there'll be a lot of people talking about it um in its own way i i, I expect um a bigger raw number than usual because i know that when um, big names passed away whether it was piper or dusty uh, ultimate warrior you know warrior of course it was you know it does it does boost ratings and i think scott you know especially due to the timing of it I think that that probably will help the number a little bit. You know, I don't think it's going to be like a uh, two million viewers or anything like that. But but I do think that that will probably help the number a little bit, just out of the curiosity and almost almost the curious of what's WWE going to do and everything like that. And they, um, you know, I I would have expected something pretty big on the SmackDown show. I was pleasantly surprised that they had it on the Raw show. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. 
If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.